$1,000, y'all. That's right, we're gonna try to spend all $1,000 in 24 hours here in Manila, Philippines. Now, we're gonna start off big. We're at the Shangri-La. We're gonna show you the room. We're gonna take you all throughout the day, every meal, every little thing. We're gonna count along the way to see if it's even possible to spend 1,000 US dollars here in Manila, Philippines. All right, time for breakfast. So we are at the Horizon Club Lounge. Now, there are two places you can get breakfast, ground level, but we're at the 40th floor because we got one of the best rooms in the hotel, which we're gonna show you after breakfast, but first, Gotta feel that tummy. Okay, my weakness, my kryptonite, bread. When you got a buffet, anything, bread is your enemy, but for me, I don't know if I can go without having it. You work over here, you got a beautiful meat and cheese section. This is actually impressive. I was not expecting this. Look, you got all your mortadellas, your cold cuts, your salamis. I mean, that is a beautiful arrangement. A cheese board right here, professionally done. You get something like done like this in America, that's gonna run you about $600. And I don't know what it is about every hotel. I, maybe British people just travel more than anybody, but everybody offers a full English breakfast. Okay, so now, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not much of a health freak food person in the morning, but when you got mango strawberry smoothie, you cannot resist the greatest fruit in the world, mango. You know, I glossed over this. Not only do they have honey, they have wild honey, truffle honey, and cinnamon honey. This isn't, this isn't just some raw forged honey. This is some bougie, fine dining honey. But now you've actually got the option of the buffet, but the a la carte as well. They had a whole extensive menu and they recommended me the egg drop, Korean egg drop right here sandwich. So check it out. Looks like we got some nice creamy, fluffy scrambled eggs on the inside. Almost like shredded little bacon bits on top, chives in between bread without the crust. And then they toast it up. How much sense does that make? I mean, I kind of like, I don't know. I'm kind of a crust type of guy, so I don't know how I feel about that. Mm. Heavy fatty eggs mixed with cream and cheese, white soft pillowy bread. Can't go wrong with anything there. Nice crispy bacon. Need some ketchup and black pepper. But actually what I'm wanting to get at is this whole plate right here. I got stuff I don't even know what it is. We got like a donut with some Rice Krispie Puffs on the top of it. A little pano chocolate, as they would say in French. Feels like it's been out, it's a little cold. And it doesn't have that, that crispy crunchiness. I mean, I'm pulling right now. That chocolate bar is solidified. I'm a forgiving man and a man of second chances. I gotta try a donut. I have no clue what flavor this is. Rice crispy puffs on top. I mean, that is a delightful donut to me. Got that little cream filling in there. Not like a Bavarian cream. You can see it's almost starting to curdle a little bit. Super sweet. I, I would actually go out and buy that. Hmm. Speaking of price, this is how much I paid for breakfast. See you at the room. All right, while we gotta let that breakfast settle, we're gonna show you the room. We got the premier suite here. Price gonna come at the end of showing you. We gotta check it out. As always, shoes off right away. And you're first introduced with the huge living room area, but you can't miss the bathroom. Little half bath right here going on. Nice ancient toilet. Beautiful, beautiful white marbling. But what you're really paying for here is the space. Look at this, you got your own chandeliers here. You got real flowers and you got all the space for your friends or friends that I don't have. Ooh, but look, you even got little welcome chocolates. Got some walnuts, some cashews, pistachios, everything, and a beautiful bottle of wine. I feel like this is not included in the price though. Beautiful L couch, got all the room in the world here. Oh, oh you could practically just sleep here. You don't even, I don't even need to see the bedroom. This is all I need. You even got a working space here, but everybody knows I'm a YouTuber. We know we don't work. We don't, why would we ever need a desk? We don't do any work. We just make videos and have fun. Like all this business stuff I would never need. Like staplers. I don't even know, like, what are these called? I don't even know what these are called anymore. <laughs> paper clips. Paper clips. We don't need no paper clips. Finally into the bedroom. I got a feeling it's going to be magical. Not that any magic's happening here. It's just magical by itself. And I'd say I'm pretty right. TV's on deck. What else? Why else would you want to spend the money to set to come here? I just keep watching TV. But the bed, the bed, we got to see how soft it is. Oh. Good pillow. Yeah. Oh, I could suffocate myself with that. That's all you need. The real question though is how big is it? One, two, three. About three maxes, maybe three and a half. But nothing makes a master bedroom without the bathroom. Let's head into the master bath. Oh man, this is, I mean, if you're gonna take a girl and you're gonna spoil her and give her the bathroom of her dreams, this may be it. You got the tub, you got the waterfall shower going on here double vanity and 
your own throne room, aka the toilet. Welcome. I don't know, the toilet looks a little outdated to me as a toto, but to me, I mean, I don't know, there's no warming, there's no nothing, there's nothing that's just really gonna take that spa-like essence for your behind, for your booty. Okay, you know the rules. One, two, three, four little pleats here. Give it a little no fold test, and then we give it a one fold, and then we go for the double fold. You know, this this feels good. It's not breaking. Even when I get a little rough with it, look at that. Not that, 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 that it's breaking, but it still feels soft. It's still got that ridge effect in here. So you can get that maximum surface area. That's an 8.2 out of 10 right there. Official score, you heard it here first. Nestle, just pure, just pure. Don't even have to think, just pop it in, let it go. But there's gotta be a fridge in here because I see the mini bar menu, it says beers, but I don't see any beers. I want some beers. Jackpot, here we go. I'm kind of insulted a little bit because, or maybe they just don't know how much of an alcoholic I am, but one of each beer isn't even enough for me to start. All right, we got one last little secret area. I guess for your close, man, this is like your hide and seek dream suit. not what you think. Uh, anything laundry, anything you need. But look at this space. Put your clothes, hide away, get away. But this is what we were going for. Pure slipper action right here. This looks almost like bunnies were made into slippers, but without the animal cruelty. It'd be a shame not to try chocolate. Now, they had many rooms in the Shangri-La, of course, but this was the most expensive I could book. So go ahead, put your bids in, let me know. It's price is right though. So if you go over the real price, there's no way you're gonna win. So to get this room for a single night before taxes or anything, cost me $460. Now, lucky enough, I have my Amex card so you get a lot of amenities, like we got to check in early. When we do check out, we don't have to check out at 4 p.m. And we have $100 credit. Speaking of $100 credit, yeah, we're gonna need that because I'm gonna need some help with this thousand dollars. Lunchtime. Now, I was gonna do in-room dining, but they were sold out of all the most expensive stuff. And if I didn't do the most expensive, there's no way we would accomplish today. So, just came downstairs. Reggie Bull, Chop House and Bar. Let's get some meat. Okay, you walk in and it's almost like this full frontal like whiskey bar in front. And then you walk through and it like reminds me of like them antique barber shops, you know, where the guy's always got his hair slicked back and he's always got the mustache that kind of curls at the end. It's one of those places, but it's all about meat. Now, when you look at this, they got different types of cuts. So they're gonna break it up. You want your tenderloin, ribeye, strip loin, or like on the bone, like a T-bone. But then the price increases based on how it's fed. So usually grass fed is gonna be the cheapest, but then as you work down, then maybe do a grass fed, finish with the corn, or it may just be grain fed the whole way, or at least like 500 days. And that price will skyrocket as soon as you start feeding it some grain. Now, there's something cool. The bringing out almost looks like a cigar box. They open it up and they just offer you six to seven knives you can choose from. I kind of felt like I was Harry Potter going into the wizarding world, the way I got to choose my knife. But it wasn't really me choosing the knife, it was the knife choosing me. That being said, I don't need it right now because we're gonna start out with some luscious crab cakes. Now, if there's anything that makes seafood better, it's a little torched limon right here, a little acidity going on there. Oh, you can hear that crisp, that crunch, that coating. And then check out the inside of this. Oh, that is tender crab cake. As you saw that fall apart. I took a beautifully plated dish and ruined it. But I bet you the taste is still intact. Mm, a truly incredible dish. Something I just don't eat enough of. That soft, tender, sweet crab meat mixed with those ingredients on the inside. It just melts in your mouth. But then it's that panko coating fried up. The crunch with it, that little contrast in texture. Mm. Now I wanna get after the ribeye for sure. But first, we got one more appetizer. We got the bone marrow here. So I could have got this just on the side, but when you get it as an appetizer, you get it with all types of garnishes on top here. So we gotta work through all these layers here. Look at that, look at that jiggly bone marrow right there. Scoop it out and it just gone, it's gone everywhere. So there's the actual bone marrow. Get on some bread and just make you a nice little 
bone marrow sandwich here. Look at that, got that pork on top right there. And we just making Bob Ross sandwiches right here. Look at that. You can spread it kind of however you want. However you feel, you can go a little thicker. You can go a little thinner. Remember, it's your bone marrow sandwich. You can have it however you like. I've never had bone marrow with actual pork on top. To tell you the truth, it makes it rich and heavy. It's spiced with almost like this chili powder as well. It actually tastes like, it kind of tastes like American chili. All right, and the thing we all want to know, what is this? We got the ribeye here. I got the Darling Down Wagyu MS5. So it comes from Queensland, Australia. I guess MS5 is the same as like an A5 in Japan, or maybe similar. So it is actually grass fed, but finished with grain. So that means they're out roaming around, all happy in the field, eating grass. And before time comes, they're purely grain fed. Now they give these serving tongs right here and y'all are about to see how steak should be cooked. Shouldn't be cooked any other way and that's it right there. Rare, because your boy here is a carnivore. I love to just appreciate that meat flavor. No sauces, nothing, just pure meat, rare. Wipe its ass, cut it, and put it on my plate. That's how I like my meat. It's actually a line from a movie. I one time watched a British dining etiquette TikTok, and they said while you're cutting, your fork can never like be like this, or it has to be over, so you look super proper when you eat. So that's what I'm gonna do. Oh. I mean, look at that right there. You just, there's no gristle. There's no parts where you're just gonna sit there and chew and chew and chew. You can see how easy it is to cut any piece, even with my left hand here. Just one little swipe, two little swipes, and you're through. And that is just compliments to the chef. A little sear on it, truly keeping it rare. I hate when I ask for rare and they still overcook it because they're scared to give it to me because they don't believe in their product. To me, that is full trust in the product, knowing how delicious your product is. Salted so the flavor comes out a little bit more, but that is how I want my ribeye. A little bit fatty, melts in the mouth a little bit, but you still get that meat, that flavor, that heartiness that I want. Mm. But I also want to try their Raging Bull sauce right here. You can definitely see that little chili flake. It's maybe like a little paprika. It looks, it smells like a little, a little smokiness to it. Oh. Mm. I don't know if I would have that with my steak, but that screams corn, beef, and rye bread. That together, mm. but for my steak, I'm just a purist. And we got a medley of mushrooms here. I mean, it is an eclectic little thing going here. I mean, this is more mushrooms than I probably ate in my early 20s. Mm. That is just a spectacular side dish. I love the different variety of mushrooms because they all get cooked just a little bit differently. Some are really cooked down. Some still got a little bit of snap and chew to them. So it's textural difference, salted perfectly. And just coated and drenched in butter. You can't eat steak without potatoes in here. Potatoes on gras Is y'all gonna sell that French 101 coming through handy? Oh man, instantaneously takes me to the holiday season right there. Layers and layers of thin potato sliced in between this butter, this cheese, this cream cooked down. You can't go wrong with that. Now, if your pockets run deep, you got about a thousand US dollars, you get this right here. Check this out. Oh my gosh, you got your own private room in here. So you, 10 or 12 of your best friends coming in here, got the whiskey, I'm sure some bourbon all ready to go right here. But it doesn't just stop with this room. You got more, you actually got your own little fridge right here that's even stacked and decked out with the cigars. But you know you can't come here and drink and smoke some of the cigars without a big meal. And then everybody comes together and you're gonna walk right through here. And this is where it's truly amazing. Look at this dining table. Wines aligned on the wall. The huge, beautiful, deep burnt orange, the chairs. I mean, this is a true luxury experience in here. Okay, now we know I'm not a man of self-discipline and after all that salty fat, I was craving something sweet. And the beautiful thing about this being BGC and it being kind of bougie is we got things like M Bakery or Magnolia Bakery as they used to be called from New York City, open the post in Manila. So you know I'll be craving some things like that banana pudding, gotta hit them Southern cravings, but they just do it all. All those American sweets that I be craving, they got the lemon bars, you see they got the magic cookie bars, a staple which I grew up with. They got all the things that just remind my childhood, cupcakes, they got ice cream, I mean, they got it all. It is just a wonderland 
for a sweets lover like me and that sweet tooth be calling so let's check out what we got first cold we got the banana pudding this is what they came famous for and this is how they open branches around the world that right there looks incredible oh i just love the consistency of in bakery banana pudding and they should have them vanilla wafers in there and you can see that it's been in there it's set a long time you see how brown those bananas are how they've started to just actually get very very ripe and sugary Oh man. You know, and this is just something that's so nostalgic. I mean, it's taking me back to my grandmother's house when she used to make me some Nilla pudding. Mm. But if you're gonna ask me if there's one thing Max likes more than banana pudding, it may be cheesecake. And not any cheesecake, but cheesecake with caramel and then some nuts on here. Oh, it's thick. They got that crust dill right at the bottom. Mm. To me, New York style cheesecake is that Goldilocks rule. Basque is a little too heavy, too creamy for me. Japan, a little too fluffy, too light. But to me, that is just right. Nope. Oh, that is a genius box. When you pull it out, it kind of rips it off. So like, you can't put it back in. You have to eat the whole thing. That box is telling me I got to eat this whole cupcake. Not me, it's the box. Let's try that. Ooh, I did not, a little too much for me. The buttercream frosting can't handle it. From a little bakery in the Philippines, I would take their little ube little cakes over that. So I tried to get everything from every section, couldn't quite do it. And they had the cookies at the counter, just like looking at me, staring at me, little big old puppy eyes. And I almost got a cookie as well, but I didn't do it. And instead we got a lemon bar. So lemon bars to me is just like the perfect summer treat. When summer comes, there's probably two desserts I crave the most. A lemon bar and the other one would be a fresh lemon cake with fresh Blueberries, picked off the blueberry tree on the farm. Oh, that texture feels on point. You can see that ooey, gooeyness right there. So this is just gonna be flour and butter. And I mean, a lot of butter. Cooked down, should have like a little lemon zest glaze on there. Mmm. Yep. That's a good lemon bar. When it makes you pucker like that, that huge acidity kick from that lemon. Oh man. Hit some taste buds, make some wake up, helps it cut through all that fat and sugar because you're gonna need to cut through because it's a lot. Mm. It is time for dinner and I'm talking, we are gonna need an impressive performance for this. We are at Canton Road, the most expensive restaurant I could find. Let's get in here. I'm talking, we're about to have a huge performance. Jordan flu game, Pat's down 28-3, come back. We're about to do it and get over $1,000 here in Manila. Anyways, we're here, so let's start it off. We got the appetizer right here. We got that papaya salad. Got to watch him bring it out here. I love the showmanship, bringing it out here, drizzling. Got a little drizzle on the salad going everywhere. So even though this was one of the cheaper things, I wanted to get it because they say it's the best seller. We got the papaya salad, pomelo as well, that dressing. Got to watch him drizzle it on here. It should have some tiny shrimp in here as well. I hope it gets better from there. Let's move it on next. What they say is they got the roasted pork belly here, right here, the suya, what we call in Hong Kong. So they got that, but they called it Macau style. So I don't know what makes it different between Macau and Hong Kong, but they give you a little Dijon mustard to dip this in as well. And now I'm a big mustard person. Uh, that is actually a big ratio mustard to pork belly. Ooh. That's kind of how I like my pork belly right there. Got that thin, crispy, just shattering layer on there. Spice it nice and salty as well. This is actually really meaty. There's not a lot of fat on there. So it's got a beautiful roasted flavor. Doesn't really have that melt in your mouth property that you would normally get with a roasted pork belly. And then that tang and mustard, that vinegar coming through with it. Mm. Now we got to get it after some dim sum. It is time since Steph, so you want to get after it while it's still warm. Get the taro puffs, one of my favorite dim sum items ever to get. And it's a super, super fragile thing to do. You see that right there, that shattering? It got this crunchy, just flaky, fall apart, almost like phyllo dough layer. And it is a hard dish to make. I mean, you have to be a dim sum master to be able to do something like this. And in fact, they've also got the fire roasted duck in a mango, kind of like chutney in there as well. It's just insane. Such a classic, like I said, you have to be a master to be able to do this. It's such a hard dish to make because the oil has to be at a certain temperature for this to actually fry up like it's supposed to and expand and have that shattering crunch. And I don't know where that kitchen is or anything, but shout out to the chef because that is perfection. 
that taro is so earthy and sweet and melt in your mouth mixed with that that actual like i said almost phyllo like crust that just shatters and dissolves in your mouth but you can still feel the oil that's gotten trapped in that batter and then you got that umami packed roasted duck and a little bit of spokiness coming from it Ooh. now while we're on the subject of dim sun had to get the lobster fried wontons with spicy sauce on the inside. Look at that, kind of wrapped it up like a package, like a beautiful bite package to me. An homage to crab ragoons. Anytime I'm at the American Chinese buffet, you know I gotta get it. But I'm not even sure how to get after this one. Whoa. And you know, it's okay to admit you're wrong. That's anything but crab ragoon. I mean, that is some plump prawns in there, almost like those floating cloud wontons you get from Hong Kong, but fried up with that ultra crispy and oily wonton wrapper. I mean, that is just an earth shattering crunch. That is like plate tectonics rocking and forth against each other. That is heard worldwide. And it ain't October, but we got the baked pumpkin, black truffle and chicken dim sum right here. Now I ain't never seen something like this. Got that sesame seed coating on the bottom. And you can see that batter they're using right there. I'm gonna guess it's got a little rice flour in it. You can see it just popping up, creating that thin, thin, thin layer right there. I think it's gonna be like nice, fried, and mochi-like. Oh. Well, I wanna talk about the black truffle, the way that it salted my taste buds there, without even asking first. To me, it's all about that texture. Again, kind of like a glutinous rice fried up, so you get that ooey, gooey, sticky mochiness but then you get that crispy, crunchy outside. Mm. I was trying to get a variety of dishes, so I only got the half, and they didn't really want me to order the whole anyways, because they were like, mm. two people don't really order the whole. I'm like, trying to spend money. But they gave me the half, so anyways, what he did is he started carving that duck. Y'all, I'm talking like, I was a Labrador that went duck hunting. I was like, couldn't take my eyes off the duck. It was like Pavlov's law. I heard him cutting that duck, that crispiness, that shatter, and my mouth started watering. So you know it's gonna be delicious right here. And they've already pre-rolled it for us. I guess we got a little cucumber in there, the duck wrapped in these little sheets, little blankets, and hoisin sauce already in there. But he know your man here is the sauce boss. He said, if you need more, we got the hoisin on deck. I'm kind of like my mind's blown because when I get in that china, it's very pure. It's all about the duck, the skin, the meatiness, the crispy, the crunchy. But this is about everything working with it. That hoisin sauce is robust, very thick bean paste. But to me, what's throwing me, it almost feel like I got some mango in there. And I just can never imagine mango and pecking duck in the same dish. But I'm not hating though. I actually kind of enjoy the mango in there. I think I probably prefer it without, but it's like pineapple on pizza. You know, it can kind of go either way. Speaking of mango, they took the rest of that duck and they stir fried it up here and they throw more mango in here. I don't know if it's because we in the Philippines or what, but we mango craze going on here. Ow, oh, thought it was boneless. It's not boneless, <laughs> ow. I mean, I ain't mad though. Like I'll go in for a second bite because that duck's so good, but I will watch out for bones. Ooh. And that duck got that second wind. I'm telling you what, I made like that second dish more than the first. Taking the back, stir frying it. I think it may have just been hoisin sauce because the way that sugar is caramelized with that high heat, you get a little bit of bitter sugar sweetness melt in your mouth. Duck meat, mm, that's where it's at. Now, I'm not much of a soup person, but when you got a soup that's 3,000 pesos on the menu, I feel like I'm about to be enlightened here. We got the Buddha soup here. So we take it off and it's still covered. I guess we got a nice little lotus leaf here. Unravel it. And it must be what's on the inside because the outside ain't really impressing me right away. Man, it's kind of ironic to call it Buddha soup because you're going to be blown away when you look at that price. Anyways, double boiled sea cucumber, abalone, konpoi, and fish moss soup. Sounds like they took every expensive ingredient they could think of and they're like, let's put it into a soup and then call it Buddha soup. Oh shoot. Of course the $50 soup comes with its own spoon. What am I doing? It got its own spoon. Why am I trying to use something else? So. We got the abalone here. I don't even, let's just go a little piece by piece right here, a little abalone, or pay our respects and try the broth. And a lot of Chinese herb, it is, you can taste the sea cucumber, the abalone, a 
very seafood broth, but it almost has like a dark soy sauce in it. The way it's got this like, mm, this, this depth of flavor, this umami that hit in the back of my mouth. Perfectly salted though. So this right here is where I think the price is coming from. I don't know, I'm trying to ju justify $50 here. I, I don't know, it was good abalone, but this must be a sea cucumber. I've never seen a sea cucumber in my life, but if I had to imagine a sea cucumber with that jiggly wiggly, this would be it. Tastes like the most mountain in your mouth piece of like beef tendon you've ever had in your life. Keep it going, we got the crispy prawn balls with seasonal fruit. Why they add the seasonal fruit, I don't know. And let's just go ahead and get this out there. We all know what this looks like. I'm not gonna say it, this is PG. Get your mind out of the gutter. Let's try some crispy wasabi covered prawn balls. <laughs> I take back everything I said. That is a fantastic dish. If you've ever had honey walnut shrimp at the American Chinese buffet, then that's what you want. That may be the best thing tonight. Breaded prawns with the wasabi mayo on the outside, fried up. You need the seasonal fruit because that is decadent, that is heavy, that is 10,000 calories right here just in that plate alone. Mm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be looking at that all night. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you're supposed to go whole bowl in the mouth, but I done went two balls deep. That right there may be the best one tonight. Okay, so they were out of like half their vegetable stocks tonight. I don't know what's going on. They had kanang, they had bok choy. So I got some taro and some other vegetables just kind of done up here. They just decided to throw some candy walnuts with some sesame seeds on it. I don't know. He recommended it, so I went for it because I'm a nice guy. Beautifully done, kind of cooked down a little bit where you get the sweetness, but still has that crunch to it. I don't like that sugar coating though. And here it is, we got the US beef, decided to represent where I'm from. We got some foie gras, and it's coated and stir fried in a spicy pepper sauce. Get a little, I feel like this is gonna be super heavy, but I'm gonna try to do a little foie gras and a little beef at the same time. I mean, you can see it, that high heat, getting that little char, that little smokiness, black pepper coming through, kind of mixing and matching with all that fatty, melt in your mouth ingredients. But to me, I need some rice or something a little too heavy. Your boy be needing some rice because it ain't life without the rice. Hello, duck. Oh. Now, I feel like I've done the impossible today. I don't know if I beat the $1,000 24 hours in the Philippines. But I know I spent this much money. Oh wait, I forgot about this. No matter where you are, I'm never too good for a Shake Shack shake. Now the total. I think we did it.